Today we're headed back to my friend Tyler's house to check out his two natural looking coastal reef tanks complete with a tank that has driftwood in it. I know, saltwater tank with driftwood. Let's get into it. What's up coral people? If you're new here, my name is Remy. And this is the Bahama Llama Coral YouTube channel. All right, I'm amending my 25K goal for the end of the year. We're gonna knock that back down to 20,000. So if you wanna help me hit that goal by the end of 2022, please like, subscribe, and hit that bell notification so you know whenever I upload new videos. Can we do a little less than 1,000 subscribers in a month? Comment below, in your opinion, what's the best reef tank that I have featured over the years? I get a lot of feedback on Chummingham's Reef. That was a video we shot at the beginning of this year, a 450 gallon lagoon tank just filled with high end colorful stuff. Make sure to check that video out if you haven't seen it yet after this one. Uh, you'll learn something guaranteed and you might get a little inspired to switch over to Calquasser. For me, Tyler's natural looking coastal reef tanks have been some of my favorite to shoot over the last couple years. You may know Tyler as inland underscore reef on Instagram. His tanks have done quite a bit of evolving over the years, so let's go over to his place and check them out. Things have changed, my friend. They've changed quite a bit, <laughs> quite well, a bit. <laughs> let's start with the OG tank that, that everybody kind of knows and loves the coastal tank it's totally different than, oh yeah i uh, the last time we saw it i like to rip things apart and put things back together and from from the beginning where i remember i remember there was not a whole lot of things in here that were grown out and then it was fully grown out and now it looks like you've kind of like pulled back on a lot of the stuff so i guess the big thing that's changed is i've gotten different lighting so i've changed out for the uh twin star which was a freshwater planted light and i have now two kessel ap9x's uh mainly because I hate seeing lighting. I really want uh, that to be an afterthought. The tank should be what everyone should look at, not the lighting that is in the way. Uh, and the secondary reason was uh, I got some massive mangroves from a breakdown uh, here locally. And it's great to have a local fish store that knows that you're uh, passionate about mangroves and uh, macroalgae because they just call me up whenever they get stuff in and they say, here, you take it because we'll probably kill it. And then lastly, kind of refining the macroalgae that are in here. I have multiple tanks now, so this tank is more associated to like some of the red macros uh, just because they can be shaded a little bit more by a lot of the corals that are growing in, whereas other tanks I have more predominant with green macros that uh, I just like to blast with lots and lots of light. Once again, just still enjoying uh, toadstools and soft corals and gorgonians and anemones and uh, yeah, just growing stuff out. So essentially it's just two MP10s uh, for flow. I have the XP Aqua Sumpless ATO. That's the one uh, that allows me to stick my ATO uh, sensor in there. Uh, that's because I have these massive windows and if, the, uh, if I just stuck the ATO sensor right on the water, it would, uh, it actually trips it because it thinks the water level is a little bit higher than it actually is. Still dosing uh, Alpha Reef uh, by Tropic Marin, and then I still use Brightwell's Neo Nitro. Uh, I think I'm dosing Iron, and then the Chael Grow. Uh, and then I'm also, uh, because phytoplankton is extremely beneficial, I'm dosing phytoplankton twice a day. And that's pretty much it. It's a really simple tank, a really simple setup. Uh, tell us about the, the NEM. That is a Chicago sunburst anemone. It was given to me by one of my good friends, Scott, at SR Aquaristic, who is the maker of this tank. They actually uh, have a massive system just full of those. Uh, and I, I fell in love with them, and I was like, I got to have one of those. Ladies and gentlemen, the only Chicago NEM under white light. <laughs> <laughs> they still look good. They look good it on looks, a white light still. It looks great. You can definitely see that if you were to put blue lights on, it would... Yeah. It would definitely pop. Yep. That's very cool. I actually have one really cool coral that a lot of OG reefers will probably really, really enjoy. It's a, it's a Heliopora or Blue Ridge Coral. Commonly uh, considered a soft coral, but I guess it'd be more like an LPS. It's got a calcium skeleton. Uh, you may see Blue Ridge Rock at your local fish store. When the coral dies, it actually has like this really blue stained colored rock. Super, super cool. Uh, I was lucky enough to find a piece, of course, said, hey, I want that. And they were like, we don't know what it is, so go ahead and have it. How's the, how's the weeping willow doing? It's we a very temperamental coral. It's a temperamental coral. 
So it was doing great until my uh, version of my like long tentacle weeping willow style toadstool has gotten to the size it's gotten. And uh, with the fact that my pumps are kind of blowing across that and the weeping willow is in front of it, I think there's been some chemical warfare happening and that has actually caused the weeping willow to really not do so well. Yeah. <laughs> it might get moved from this system and put into a different system. I really don't want to cut the big toadstool. It's awesome. So I'm, I like to keep that as my main staple coral in this tank. So we'll have to see maybe the weeping willow will end up in a different system. I feel like this has changed a lot. I think <laughs> your, what was the original direction for this tank? And then where did you end up today? Uh, a year ago, I set up a tank with T5s, um, a very small minimal aquascape for SPS. And as you can see, <laughs> this does not have any SPS in here. I've always had the idea in the back of my head of trying to add driftwood into a saltwater aquarium. <clears throat> and after kind of sitting on it for many years uh, and having that whole decline of my original idea, I said, you know what, it's time to just attempt it. I did all my research online. There's a lot of people that just say, don't do it, it's gonna leach stuff into your tanks. and it probably does, there's, you know, wood has tannins in it. I prepped my filtration to sort of combat a lot of that uh, in the hopes that uh, I could remove some of the tannins as they leach out into the, the system. And so now this is my driftwood lagoon. I used pine manzanita wood um, and because it's a pretty dense wood um, and it doesn't, I would say, have as much dirtiness into it. Like if you got a, a typical piece of driftwood, like that would then uh, really start to just get junk out of it and then be able to like pollute your tank like a ton more. Mm -hmm. This, as you can see, is going through its wonderful shift in season. So I got some cyano, I have some uh, bryopsis, a little bit of hair algae. A lot of that came from the wood sort of leaching into the water. I did have a little spike in phosphates, um, but not anything to the extent of like where corals or fish or anything are like gonna be affected at all. People will probably notice if when you get the B-roll shots, there are flatworms in here. Uh, that is one of the downsides of uh, uh, one of my weird concepts in my brain. I was trying to uh, keep blue slugs, uh, commonly called the blue nudibranch in the early stages of this tank. Uh, so I kind of farmed them, mm. the flatworms, and... Uh, it worked. Well, it worked. The <laughs> flatworms are really prolific, but the uh, downside is is that my success with the blue slugs have been very minimal. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's my next step, is kind of going through, cleaning it up, getting rid of the flatworms. And then I've mainly kept this system to mostly soft corals, whether they be uh, non-photosynthetic or just uh, typical soft corals and then really focused in on uh, the fish choice. Trying to create an environment very much specific to a uh, mangrove estuary lagoon system for specific fish that would be found there. Uh, the Bengai cardinals, the cardinal fish, they love to swim in and out of the roots of, of the mangroves, and I just think they're super cool. Got to pick them out and actually uh, did my best at determining what, you know, a male and a female, and thankfully I believe that these are a male and female, so I'm hoping in the future I can get them to breed. I do have a long spine urchin in here, which it was really cool to see as I initially added them to the tank, they immediately ducked into the long spine urchin. I'm not sure where the chalk bass originates from, but it's a really cool fish that's not exactly well seen in fish tanks just because of its coloration. It's a brown with like purplish hue, only really good to see under white light, so most people don't keep them in their tanks. The yellowtail tamarin uh, is actually one of a uh, dream fish for me. I, I was lucky enough to see it at one of the local fish stores. Steve had been holding on to it and had been feeding it. Um, I watched it for a while. They can be really temperamental, can be hard to get eating. Thankfully, he has been an awesome addition to this tank. Uh, and then the last fish that I have in here are actually uh, two sailfin blennies. Uh, they are just super cool. I saw them on a website and I was like, I have never seen those in anyone's tank, in the trade. And I was like, I gotta have them. Uh, the fact that they can just flap their dorsal fin and just dance around, it's just the coolest thing to watch during feeding time. Uh, this tank though, I, I wanted to keep it very, um, I guess, con-specific, like just a singular species. And so 
I mostly am going with, uh, I guess not a species, a singular genus. Uh, so Halomedia is kind of what I've been going with, uh, different uh, species of Halomedia. As you can tell, there's only a small chunk in here. I have to get some more. The one downside of having an urchin in the tank is that it likes to eat the things that I'm trying to grow. And then the other thing, I was lucky enough to find uh, some seagrass, and I thought I would try my hand at some seagrass in this tank. And so sprinkled in here are, um, I think it's shoal grass, I believe, I can't remember what the genus species name is. There's a little bit of a, a stunting period whenever you transition seagrass to somewhere, and that uh, utilizing things like root tabs um, are super helpful to helping like the seagrass re-adapt to its new environment. So it's able to put its roots down and then um, be able to, to get that nutrients it needs to kind of rebound um, and, and continue to grow. The whole premise of this tank was actually thought to be sort of like a hurricane disaster, right? So hurricane comes through, destroys a bunch of old growth mangroves. So you have these big old root systems and unfortunately the tops of the system, like the trees have been broken off. And these are the new propagules that have come in, flowed in, found their spot and have continued to start and regrow uh, in the new environment that they're in. So I've pretty much placed a lot of propagules in between um, these like, like driftwood root clusters that I've made and I've let them sort of grow their roots down into the soil, creating an even more intricate environment for the fish to live in and swim throughout. There's a theme that nobody has ever done before called hurricane. <laughs> <laughs> yes, or hurricane. hurricane aftermath. <laughs> yes, congratulations. Yes, I, I'm creating my own <laughs> themes here. Yes, white lights, hurricane aftermath. Like it's, <laughs> it's uh, yeah, weird concepts that come to my brain, and uh, I, I guess that's just my freshwater side of 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 the hobby coming through in my saltwater side. I I love to create those types of environments. I, I I've seen a lot of these great uh, freshwater aquascapers starting to come over to the salty side and using some of their their concepts, and I'm like, man, I should really be doing that as well like we we should have layover you know between both the hobbies and styles and and types of scaping that we're doing not just here's some rock mm -hmm. and then let it go this tank has a little bit different filtration right we featured this before are you still on a sump and everything yeah yeah for sure the sump is still there the only difference that i added in here was a, uh, a skimmer so i have a skimmer down here and then also a carbon reactor. Both of those are playing the function of trying to maintain the tannins as they are leaching out of the driftwood. Now, tannins can cause acidification, and acidification is not great for uh, corals and coral growth. Uh, that's why we always strive for higher pHs. The carbon reactor is running 24 seven just to maintain healthy and clear water for the fish and the uh, inhabitants inside of there. So this is SR Aquaristic. Uh, it's a company based out of Chicago. Uh, Scott actually just opened up a store called Zose, which is his new uh, actual storefront in the Chicagoland area. And for those who are looking at this and going, that's a weird looking stand. You're right, it's a weird looking stand. It's a concrete stand, it's reinforced. So yeah, totally different, super strong, super light though. Um, and that's what, I, it just creates a really cool look. Um, it's not just a white stand, it's not just a black stand, um, something different. So if somebody wants to put driftwood in their saltwater tank, how would you suggest that they start that process? First, find a reputable supplier of it. I wouldn't just be going pulling that off of some random roadside anywhere. <laughs> and then when I would, I would pick the selection, I would find something that's a little bit harder, like a harder wood. Harder woods will last longer than a soft wood. From there, I would definitely clean, uh, scrub, even if you get it from a reputable uh, supplier, I would definitely clean it to make sure you can get as much of that organic or detritus or anything that's been kind of in there. It's it's a natural item. So it's the same thing we would do with like rock that we would get, make sure we clean it. And then of course, just uh, make sure that your system is outfitted to be able to remove the tannic acid that comes from the driftwood. I wouldn't advise throwing uh, a full SPS reef in there right, right now. I think that's still to be determined. Maybe in the future we can figure out a way to do it. I don't think I will be the one to do that. I, <laughs> I will continue to enjoy my soft corals and uh, the environments that I'm creating. Tyler, the king of the natural reef, <laughs> thank you so much for, uh, for taking us through your tank today. No, thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks for coming. As always, want to thank Tyler for letting me come over and shoot his tanks. Also, a huge shout out to Tyler for helping me at a recent frag swap. I had a radio 
broadcast that was smack dab in the middle of our frag swap this fall. And so I couldn't actually sell coral during the frag swap, but Tyler stepped in and he sold coral for me. I was only there for set up and tear down. So I guess the more labor intensive parts I was there for, but still a lot to take on by yourself. So thank you so much to Tyler for that. While you're out cruising for videos, make sure to check out Ocean State Aquatics and my friend, Scott Crow. Toasty. So many videos on their YouTube page, all professionally produced. You gotta go check them out. Ocean State Aquatics TV on YouTube and follow OSA on Facebook and on Instagram as well. And I also need to give a big thanks to Fritz Aquatics for helping out this channel over the past couple years, going to Aquashellas, things like that. Obviously, they're amazing products that they have. The Fritz Blue Box, my favorite kind of salt, and the Turbo Start, which has led to the, uh, the start of this tank right over here. We will in in the next couple videos get to phase two of the basement reno. I'm very excited about it. As you can see, you may have noticed that there's a blue damsel just like hanging out in this tank, uh, testing it out for me because this will be Uno and Dosa's tank. But right now it's uh, the kids have named this blue damsel blue. So it has a nice unique name. Thank you for joining me today on the video. I appreciate it. If you haven't yet subscribe so you know when I upload the next video will either be my 10 questions with Lauren from Simple Aquariums or phase two. I'm sure Lauren's like, hey, you should probably post my video. Really bad Australian accent. Anyways, I'm gonna go and uh, thanks for joining me. Appreciate it. Okay, love you, bye.